If you've invested in a quality canister filter for your aquarium, like the all-new Fluval FX2, for example, then it's important to maintain it on a regular basis to make sure that the filter is actually operating as efficiently as it's supposed to. So in this video, we're going to talk about all the different things you should be doing on a regular basis to make sure that your FX2 is running at 100% and that your aquarium is as clean as it possibly can be. So as Doja Cat once said, let's get into it. Yeah. Now everything that we're about to cover in this video is outlined in the instruction manual that came with your FX2, so we do recommend keeping it and consulting it if you're ever unsure about anything. Now if you threw it out, no worries, the instruction manual is also available online on our website, uh, which I've linked to directly in the description down below. So to start, I'll put the FX2 maintenance frequency chart up on the screen. This chart is a guideline to how frequently the different parts of an FX2 filter should be cleaned or replaced. Now keep in mind, of course, that the nature of your particular aquarium will impact the frequency with which you want to be actually cleaning out your filter. If your aquarium has uh, a lot of fish, or if you have very large fish that produce a lot of waste, for example, you're going to want to be cleaning out your filter much more frequently than if you just have a totally standard community type setup. Now the FX2 maintenance frequency chart can also be found in the FX2 instruction manual and I've also linked to it directly in the description down below and I recommend you consult it just from time to time to make sure that you're actually staying on top of maintenance. So let's get cleaning! Regardless of what maintenance you're actually performing, step one is to disconnect and drain the filter. To do so, first turn the in and out valves to the closed position, and then unplug the pump. Disconnect the in and out valves, and then hold the filter by the side handles to move it. Loosen the six lid fasteners, remove the filter lid and set it aside, and then using the red T handles, lift the media stack out of the canister, and then pour the water out of the filter. Now we're ready to do some maintenance. We'll start with the filter media. First remove all the foam pads and rinse them with aquarium water. We recommend rinsing out the biofoam pads, the white ones, every month, and the biofoam plus pads, the black ones, about every three months. After about six months of use, we recommend just replacing the pads with new ones. Next up is the chemical media. This needs to be replaced every month, so just take the old stuff and throw it out, and put new media in, and you're done. Lastly, the biological media. We recommend rinsing it out with aquarium water every month, and replacing about half of it every six months or so. Now a lot of people will ask us why we recommend replacing biomedia, and whether it's even necessary, or if we're just trying to scam people. We promise we're not. <laughs> the reason why we recommend doing so is because over time the internal pore structure of the biomedia, which is where the nitrifying bacteria actually live, it gets clogged with detritus, and rinsing out the media gets rid of some of it, but not all of it. So over time, more and more of the internal pore structure gets clogged, which reduces the surface area available to beneficial bacteria. That reduces the overall efficiency of the media, which in turn reduces the efficiency of the filter. So that's why we recommend every six months or so replacing about half of the biomedia, just to keep the canister working as efficiently as it possibly can. Lastly, give the inside of the canister a good clean and rinse it out. Now two very important points to mention. One, never use uh, soap or detergent or anything other than water when you're cleaning the filter. And two, when you're filling the baskets with media, leave at least half an inch or about a centimeter of free space from the top of the baskets to the media to allow the baskets to actually fit together properly. Next up is impeller maintenance. Now the impeller is the only moving part in the entire filter, so maintaining it on a regular basis, about every three months or so, is extremely important. 
So first we need to remove the pump from the canister itself, remove the three screws with a Phillips screwdriver and set them aside, and then remove the impeller assembly by gently holding the fan blades and pulling it straight out of the impeller well. There's four parts to the impeller, the impeller shaft, the front bushing, the rear bushing, and the impeller assembly itself. Carefully remove the impeller shaft from the two bushings and clean it with a brush. Be very careful when you do this. The shaft is made from ceramic, which is resistant to wear and tear while it's in use, but it's pretty fragile. Now, when you remove the impeller assembly, one or both of the bushings may stay stuck in their respective seats. If it's the front bushing that's stuck in the canister, remove it. But if it's the rear bushing that's stuck in the pump, you can just leave it there. Lastly, clean the impeller itself with water and a brush. You'll want to replace the impeller assembly on a yearly basis because, again, it's the only part in the entire filter that actually moves. It spins 24-7 and just kind of gradually wears down over time. So replacing it about once a year helps to keep the entire filter working as efficiently as it possibly can. While you've got the pump off the canister, check if the motor seal ring needs to be maintained. We recommend cleaning and lubricating it with Fluval silicone lubricant every three months and replacing it on a yearly basis. Once that's done, you can reassemble all the pump components and screw the pump back onto the canister body. There's only a few more things left to do. Every three months, we recommend cleaning out the intake stem and strainer. Any debris stuck to the strainer cage or inside the intake stem can reduce the filter's performance so keeping it clean is a good idea. Then every six months or so, it's a good idea to rinse out the ribbed hosing just to help flush out any debris that could be trapped inside the ribbing. And that is it for today. Be sure to hit the link in the description down below to learn more about the FX2 canister filter. If you have any questions, concerns, or conundrums, please leave them in the comment section. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. If you enjoyed the video, hit like, and if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.